everybody, Chef Nicholas Lodge here from Green Tornado Live. And I'm Sydney Galperin from Sydney Sweet Adventures. So we're super excited to bring together this collaboration where we're going to show you this fun rainbow themed uh, cake and also little confections. Yeah, so we're going to do a collaboration, a two-part collaboration, which we're super excited about. So this episode and then the next episode are both going to be putting together this rainbow themed uh, dessert table with a cake and a whole bunch of elements. So um, first you're going to have your episode first, right? Correct. And I'm going to be showing how to make these sort of beautiful like rainbow roses and then going on to talk about different variations on the roses, making little ribbon roses, how to make homemade customized sprinkles. And uh, then I'm going to make some little party streamers, some little bows, and then finish off showing how to make the marshmallow clouds. I love it. And then up next in my episode, I'm going to be doing the pulled isomalt rainbow, the isomalt lollipops, two different ways that are completely different than I showed in my isomalt lollipops episode. So two brand new takes on it, as well as doing a sprinkle filled with the amazing sprinkles that Chef Nicholas is going to show you, a unicorn horn. So you can use these as lollipops and cake toppers and a whole bunch of different uses. So we're super excited to spend the next two sessions with you, so let's get started. <laughs> Hi everybody, so while Sydney's off getting her ice and ready for her episode, I'm going to show you in my episode lots of fun things with a rainbow pride LGBT uh, unicorn theme. So I'm going to start off in this first part by showing you how to make a simple molded rose. So these are the simple molded roses. This is very much a classic sort of European bakery type of rose. Working in countries like Switzerland, I would make these in marzipan for a sack of tort. Um, and these can be made, uh, obviously, in a, you know, more of a classic color. So you could turn this, this is obviously pink modified fondant. You could do these with red modified fondant for, say, a 40th wedding anniversary. But these can be used in, uh, on a smaller size for things like cupcakes. And then, of course, you can use the little small ones for cookies. But this is also very nice to use on a, you know, a European style entremet style cake. Or you could use, obviously, on a buttercream cake, on a rolled fondant cake. It's just an alternative to making gum paste roses and, of course, also price, uh, price point as well. Uh, this is not as labor intensive as obviously making a gum paste rose with lots of individual petals. Um, when you make these roses, so first of all, um, obviously this shows the little bud and then the next size bud and this is like the next stage and then obviously through to the fully large size. And because we're doing this whole sort of rainbow theme, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to make this as a rainbow rose. But you can see the same rose you could make, obviously, in uh, single colors. But these are also really fun because, for example, for a graduation, you could take the two, two school colors and you can alternate like burgundy, yellow, burgundy, yellow. You could also do these for Christmas, for example, um, in red, white, and green, or in green and red, you know, so you can do all different types of uh, variations on this. So it's a really fun uh, type of rose to make, including obviously different colors. Now you have um, in on nicholaslodge.com, there is a download. So this is a download for making the simple molded rose. And uh, so this is obviously goes through the stages of making the rose, okay? So it shows you all the stages. And um, in the handout, it talks about the simple molded rose can be created using many mediums, modified rolled fondant, 50-50 paste, which is equal parts of gum paste and rolled fondant, modeling chocolate, chocolate clay, marzipan almond paste, okay? So this can be made, and obviously it talks about here for cups, cup, cupcakes, entremet style cakes, gateaux, and obviously is very popular in countries like Switzerland, as I said, on the sack of tort for obviously a made in marzipan. Um, now when you, um, on lesson, on my episode six on uh, Secrets from the Renshaw Academy, I showed how to modify the rolled fondant, which is basically where you would take um, the rolled fondant, 115 grams, and add a quarter of a teaspoon of tylose or CMC and a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. So if you were making the rose, for example, in pink, that's what I would do is take 115 grams of your sugar paste rolled fondant and just modify that with a quarter of a teaspoon. Now because um, I'm going to be using just little small amounts of the different colors, what I have here is I have 50 grams of red uh, rolled fondant. Now I'm using the Renshaw's pre-colored fondant, okay? So I'm using obviously pre-colored Renshaw fondant in the um, all of the colors, the rainbow colors. But and the green, what I've actually done with the green is I mixed the bright green and our regular green together to make almost like an in-between between green. But you could totally, of course, use this more bright green color. Um, alternatively, of course, you could take 
like again I show in episode six on coloring, you could take white uh, sugar paste and then or rolled fondant and color it with red or whatever color you wanted to, all right? Um, but if you have pre-colored fondant or sugar paste, that's obviously generally the best way to go. Now, so when you are, um, I have here 50 grams of red, all right, so approximately two ounces, and then I have 25 grams, approximately one ounce of the other colors, all right? So I have these colors here, so these are my other colors, obviously I need for my six colors, all right? Um, and what we're gonna do is, because we're gonna use this just for a very, very small amount, so on episode seven, which also was a collaboration with Sydney Galpin from uh, Sydney Sweet Adventures, um, I showed how to do the lemon slice, where rather than, for example, modifying a whole 115 gram batch, I just took the Tylos pot, and that is what I'm doing with these colors. So each of the six colors, literally all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the sugar paste rolled fondant, and I'm just gonna dip it into the Tylos like that. So really you're just adding just one little dip of Tylos, okay? And that's going to be, what that's going to do is just going to firm up and tighten up the product a little bit, okay? And I will also add a little bit of vegetable shortening to that as well, okay? And uh, so basically you're going to take your 50 grams of red and your 25 grams of your orange or yellow, your green, your blue and your purple, all right, which are the six colors we need. And we're just going to literally, as I said, just a little bit of Tylos. Now, you do have to be careful of contamination, meaning, you know, when you're using red, so when you finish with the red, you want to just wipe your hands on a wet towel and dry them, because when you pick up the yellow, for example, you're going to, you don't want to cross-contaminate the colors, because you will get a little pigment on your hands, okay? But, um, so I've just, uh, that's the last one I need to modify, and then I'm going to get ready for the next step. So you will need a size guide. If you don't have one of these, if you go to nicholaslodge.com, click on recipes and templates, you can download this onto cardstock. Cut out with a hole punch, cut around with a pair of scissors, so you will have a size guide. You can even laminate this as well. We also will need a plastic, um, either a flap. This is like my multi-flap I use for sugar flowers. So this is obviously one of my Nicholas Lodge brand products. You can also use just like a plastic page protector um, folder. You could even use like more of a heavy duty, like zip top type of bag, like a freezer bag, okay? But this is where we're gonna thin the, thin the petals out into. Now, um, when we make the rose, following your directions uh, for the simple rose here, okay? Going to take your paste, so we're gonna start off with a number 12 ball of paste. This will sit on the size guide hole with one third below, two thirds above. So obviously you have also photographs on here to help you understand what I'm doing. So we're gonna start off with a number 12. And so we're gonna take, I'm gonna do this in red. Now, obviously colors of the rainbow, we have you know red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, all right? So that is our sequence of obviously our colors, okay? And uh, so those are the colors. So I'm gonna obviously make my rows alternating through those colors. Um, but of course you could just mix and match them. It doesn't actually matter if they're not in order. It just gives you the sort of the effect, okay? But um, I'm gonna start off with a number 12. So this is gonna be the first petal, which will be in red. So I'm gonna take a number 12 ball. So you want approximately about a third below the hole here, about two thirds above the top. Now that is gonna form the top of the rows. And generally I work on a little silicone mat, like a mat like this, or a little mat like this. And um, this just makes it a little bit easier. Now each time you take your paste, you wanna add just a little tiny bit of vegetable fat shortening to this. All right, gonna make it into a ball. Then we're gonna make it into a cone shape. And this wants to be about two and a half inches in length, all right? So this wants to be about two and a half inches, so just a little tiny bit longer there. So about uh, five and a half centimeters, okay? All right, and then what we're gonna do here, this is gonna be the first part of the rows. So we're then going to, in your instructions here, it says fold over the top and pinch a fishtail shape approximately one inch wide. So you can use a little bit of corn flour or cornstarch on your finger. You're just gonna fold over the top, all right? So you're gonna fold over the top like this, so like a penguin, and then you're gonna pinch this like fishtail shape. All right, so what you're doing here is you want to create a fishtail it's fairly thin edge. Now this is a technique that I developed many, many years ago. When I was taught how to make these style of roses in marzipan, my instructor taught me making a cone and then putting the first petal on. But if you actually do this technique where you make like a fish tail, like a mermaid's tail, what it does, it gives you the cone and the first petal at the same stage. So it actually eliminates one step. 
And you can see here in your photograph there on your download from nicholaslodge.com, remember on recipes and templates, you see how you make the cone and you make it like a fishtail shape. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take your fishtail shape here, I'm going to take the right hand side of the fishtail shape and you tuck that into the middle and you just roll the left hand side around so you see how that is going to form your first layer of your petals, okay? So really, really simple to do. And you can use this, as I said, remember in modeling, this could be modeling chocolate. So obviously the nice thing about modeling chocolate, marzipan almond paste, they taste really yummy. So um, if you're using these things on cupcakes, that's sometimes a consideration, or on cookies where people are going to eat them. So that's going to be the first part. And then um, once we've done that, we're going to then waste slightly of making a mid to full size rose, all right? So if you were going to make this as a rose bud, you don't waste it at this stage. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create like a little bit of a waste here. So I'm just gonna just waste it just very, very slightly. So you're just gonna get this little tiny bit of a waste there. So it's almost a bit like a dress shape and then obviously the bust torso comes up here, okay? So you're just gonna waste it. Just think of like a crab or a lobster with these little pincers and that is gonna give you your first stage. Now in this case, because we're doing alternating colors, we're going to now then put on so we're going to continue measuring um, two number six balls of paste placed in a plastic flap. So we're going to take now a number six of orange. Now this is where you just need to be a little bit careful. And what I've actually done is all of my other balls I've done, I've already pre-measured and just wiped my hands between them, okay? Um, but so when you're doing this, you just need to decide how many rose petals you're going to make in number six in yellow and just pre-measure those because it means you're not going to contaminate every time you pick up the paste. So I need a number six of orange, okay? So I'm gonna be doing a number six of orange. And a little later on, I'm gonna be using a number eight of um, orange as well for the outer petals, okay? So you take a number six of orange and a number six of yellow. Now, of course, if you're doing this with just one color, like the pink rose I showed at the beginning, it's a little bit uh, quicker, but this is obviously really fun to do. And once you get them all measured off, you can enjoy these. Now, you're gonna take your plastic flap, all right? So you're just gonna, each time you do this, you said you're just gonna just condition, so just touch your vegetable shortening on your paste. Now marzipan or modeling chocolate, because of the natural oil in it, comes off very, very easily, all right? And then all we're gonna do here is you're just gonna just press it with your thumb, so you're flattening it out, and then the, the edge that's away from you, now this is important because when you peel the plastic off, if you thin out here, it's gonna tear it. So you're just using your thumb and you're just going to thin out the edge of the petal that's away from you, just a little bit. So you see the bottom, the bottom half of these petals has been thinned out. See, and then when you peel off the plastic, see these will come off very easily. Now, we're going to start off by putting on the first petal. All right, so the first petal is going to go, and that's going to be orange, and it's going to be attached where the red spiral finishes. So right here, all right, at this point here, you can see that's where the petal finishes. So you take your first petal, and then you're just going to attach that first orange petal where the red one finishes. You can see there, okay? You just tuck this in. Now there's no need to use any glue on these smaller petals because we've pre-conditioned the paste, but obviously marzipan and almond paste and modeling chocolate sticks to itself. But the paste, because we've added the shortening and uh, we thinned it out, and then the yellow one will tuck inside the orange one, and it goes on top. So you see how you're going to create the orange and the yellow will come on top like this. Now, if you were gonna make the tight bud, so this is the tight bud here, what you would then do is literally at this point here, all right, you would waste it down like I did before, waste it down, and then you just cut it off with a pair of scissors. So just taking a pair of scissors, you just cut this off at an angle. And generally I do these ones, I would do a lot of times at an angle. So you see how I've cut this at an angle. So if I was gonna put this like, for example, on say a cupcake or on a cookie, it looks more like a rosebud. And then of course you can pipe the little calyx on. I'm going to take this rose right the way through, but you can of course at any stage, you can stop it at that stage, okay? So then um, once we've got that done, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be for the mid-size, we need three number sevens. Now for the number seven, it's obviously number seven on the size guide, we're going to use a green, and then I'm going to use a blue, and then I'm going to use a purple, because these are my three remaining colors from my rainbow, okay? And it's just approximately the, uh, these sizes. 
So as I said, just going to work again, just a little shortening into each one because what that does is sort of conditions it as you come to use it. This is really important whenever you're using obviously gum paste, flower paste, you're using 50-50 uh, paste, modified fondant, modified fondant to be like gum paste, you're always going to add a little bit of vegetable fat, vegetable shortening before you work with it. We don't do this on straight fondant because there's no need. And then you're going to put now your next ones here. All right, and then again, we're just going to flatten it, flatten it, flatten it. All right, and then you're just going to thin this out but I found the plastic works really well. In fact, when I was taught making these roses, uh, we actually did this on the back of a bench scraper, uh, the chef that taught me in uh, Switzerland. But um, as I said, I um, found when I started teaching that plastic works really well, okay? So again, you can see, of course, these are naturally gonna be a little bit bigger. Now, when we put these on, okay, so obviously you've got your yellow, so we're continuing, and I'm going around in, um, Basically, I'm going around in a counterclockwise, but you can go clockwise. It's really uh, whatever you find is easiest, all right? But I'm gonna continue round, so I'm going round, obviously, my yellow one, my green one. So the green one is gonna sit here where my thumb is. So the green pedal will actually sit, so it's gonna be sort of, the middle of the pedal will be like half on the yellow and half on the orange. Now, the nice thing about doing this is if you mess up on the pedal or it gets a weird shape, you just reshape it. So then we're going to take the green pedal and you see how I'm going to attach the left-hand side of the green pedal here, all right? And then the right-hand side will be left open. And then my blue pedal will tuck inside here. You see, so you're creating this spiral. And then my purple will come inside the blue. And so you create that shape there. Now then you're going to use just a little bit of cornstarch and we're just gonna waste it very slightly because we're establishing the shape, all right? So each time, gonna establish the shape. And then I'm going to just gonna pinch the petals back a little bit and just give a little bit of shape to them. See, they're quite thin on the edge and you're gonna get that nice shape. You also, if your center part moves a little bit, you can use like your little companion tool here or a toothpick just to straighten that up, all right? Because see how we've built, built up the petals. Now, the next step is going to be, um, if you're going to uh, take it through to the next step, all right, so now what we need to do is we're going to then make a fully blown, this is gonna be a full size, we need number eight size, all right? So number eight size. So obviously we've used now one of each of our rainbow colors. So we've done the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, and the purple. All right, so now we're gonna start again. So with obviously, so now what we need to do is we need a red, an orange, a yellow, and a blue, okay? Um, if you're gonna do the, so I've already got my one here. So it's gonna be my number eight size. So again, just, you know, just measure about one third below. And you can just make a sort of standard size number eight and then just use that for your, so we're going to do a red, and then we need the orange, which I've already pre-measured that. So we've got an orange one, we have a yellow one, and then we have um, next color green, okay? It does get sometimes a little confusing when you do this, because obviously you're working with, and then as I said, each time you do this, you take the colors here, and you're gonna pop this in, and then the yellow, but just as that, if you, and especially sometimes when you're actually coloring, tinting the fondant yourself, you know, you might, as I said, it might be a little bit more staining your fingers. So just gonna put this on and then my green. Okay. And then what we're gonna do now again, you're just gonna flatten, 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 flatten and then just work the edge of your petal, all right? So it's just the top edge. I'm just using my thumb. Remember, this is the edge away. Now you see that this is a good example. Like if your paste gets misshapen, it's really no big deal. I mean, all you do is just reshape it, just put it back into there as well, okay? And just thin out your edge. And then once you thinned out your edge here, all right, because this is going to be, so I've thinned out about the top half of the pedal. So this is going to go on to 
So obviously we finish with the purple, all right, so then the red is going to go here where my thumb is, so the, because obviously we're working in that counterclockwise. So the red will go on next. So I'm just gonna put my red on. So I'm attaching the left-hand side of it. I'm gonna open this out. And then my orange is going to go into here. This will be my orange. Just remember, just leave that end over. And you can use it like a Dresden tool just to sort of press the paste on the bottom. You can just come in here with the Dresden tool and just press this on. Okay, and then we're gonna take the yellow. Remember, you have to get four petals on here. But it's a very easy rose because it's just one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna take now the green. You see green is gonna come here like so. Just gonna bring these around. And again, you're just gonna gently waste, so using your fingers like this, you're just gonna just gently waste the rows like this. All right, and again, I'm going to now give my rows shape. So you see how I'm just gonna tweak the petals back? So I'm just pinching the petals back a little bit. Again, just make sure that that center part sort of stays, stays straight, okay? And that is sort of how you would do then the next layer of petals. All right, so I'm going to now measure off my... Hi, my name's Paul Bradford, and welcome to Module One, Baking and Filling. After working and running businesses in the cake world for the last 25 years, I want to share some of the secrets on how to bake the perfect cake. So the first thing you're going to learn to bake in this module is three of the most popular cakes, from a Madeira cake, a rich chocolate cake, and of course, the traditional rich fruit cake. Then you're going to move on to learn how to make the most beautiful fillings for your cakes, from my tried and tested buttercream recipe and my three most popular ganaches, the dark chocolate ganache, the milk chocolate ganache, and the white chocolate ganache. And the last stage of this module is how to cut and fill your cake. So you've got a single Medina cake here and a double barrel chocolate cake. I'm going to take you through all the different stages, how to get a level finish, how to fill the buttercream, how to fill the ganache, and of course how to get a lovely and crisp, sharp finish. Once you've completed this module, you're going to be confident in baking the perfect cake to suit any designer wedding cake or novelty cake. Welcome to module one, baking and filling. Welcome back. So in this next part, I'm gonna show you how we can take a full-size rose and then turn it into a fully blown rose. Now, if of course you wasted this in and then just cut that off with scissors, and uh, I use the crate con convoluted foam to dry these. So you know when you're drying the roses, this works really well um, as a way to dry these, okay? And uh, so what we're gonna do uh, next is we're going to actually move on to make the um, outside uh, petals. Okay, so we're just gonna put this to one side. And for this, you're going to need some spoons. Now these are yogurt spoons for frozen yogurt. And uh, they're a little e more elongated than a teaspoon, but you could also use, for example, like metal uh, dessert spoons as well. But these are just plastic uh, Froyo spoons, okay? And um, so we're going to use um, the size guide. So we need number nine small. And uh, I'm gonna use the five uh, remaining, the five petals. So obviously uh, we finished off uh, with, the, um, with the yellow, all right? So, and then we're, we're going to um, now move on to the sort of the next the next colors okay so we're going to um, gonna go the yellow and then obviously we did the red the orange yellow and the green so now we're going blue purple then back red orange and yellow so we need number nine small size here so it wants to be just to go through the number nine hole okay and then you're going to then once you've done that gonna now what I do here is I actually do these one at a time okay so you're just gonna just do these one at a time so I make this into a little bit of a cone shape, all right? So make it all a bit like a rose cone shape. 
put it into my flap, again press this down, and then I'm thinning out that top edge of the pedal. Okay, and I leave this sort of part here thicker, okay? So it makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna take this, peel this off, and then what you do here is you take the spoon, I'm just gonna pop that into the spoon here, like so. Now if it feels a bit sticky, you can just pop a little bit. It's a little bit humid here in the studio, and um, obviously those live in humidity area, humid areas. But just gonna pop this in, and then just gonna just fold that over the top of the spoon like that, okay? And then what you would do is you would then continue. So you make a blue, I'm making a purple. I'm gonna then go back to my sequence, so I have red. I have orange, and then I have yellow, okay? And then once you've made those, you're going to just leave those for about two to three minutes just to firm up a little bit. So the reason why we would do these individually is then you know the blue one is obviously gonna be drier than the yellow one, so you just leave them two or three minutes to dry. And uh, then we're going to attach these. Now because these are a little bit dry, we're gonna use some piping gel. I'm gonna use piping gel. This is a little needle tip applicator. And so I'm gonna start off with my blue one. And I'm going to put just a little bit of piping gel just on the bottom here because these won't stick to themselves at this stage, okay? Now, obviously, we had the green was our last petal. So now we're going to put in the blue. So the blue will sit in here. So you're going to extend down a little bit. And then we're going to take the purple. We're going to put just a little bit. You can also brush this on as well, but piping gel. You could also use like a corn syrup, which we use a lot here in the United States, but just sort of something that's sticky. Okay, edible glue could be also used as well, but piping gel and corn syrup have a little bit more body to them, okay? And then you're gonna put on the red, because we're going back to now our original sequence. You see, you can just sort of peel these back. So we're gonna put in the red, and then we're going to, and then you're gonna pop the orange, and then the yellow. As I said, you know, don't get too worried if you do get out of sequence. This one, actually, I'm showing you in the sort of, obviously, the sequence here of the colors, you see? And I'm gonna put the yellow on here. This will be the yellow. All right, so you see how they create that. And then you're just gonna, again, gonna use your, just gonna go around just gently, okay? So you see how that's gonna waste that down. So take in then just a little, but each time you do this, you want to establish the waist, all right? So you establish the waist and each time. So then you're going to then now just gently start to work the paste, all right? And you do this slowly because if not, what's going to happen is the rose is going to pop up. It's going to actually just pop up like that. And then you're just going to just take a pair of scissors. It's going to lop off that paste at the bottom here like so. Okay, and because you've done dry these on a spoon, they're sort of semi-dry, you can just re-tweak those, but that will give you a rose. Now these, these colors that you have left here, you can actually recycle these. So generally what I just do is I just pull off the, you know, like the, the shaded, the, obviously the mixed color, so you see how I've got a little bit of red in there. And then these colors, you can actually just leave these. I'm gonna show you some ideas of doing, using these little scraps so we don't really waste anything. And then you, of course, would just pop these back into your bag. And then to dry this, we will use the large one. I generally just pop this onto the crate foam former like this. And then I take some little bit of plastic wrap here. There we go. So just gonna use just a little bit of plastic wrap. And I'm just gonna just put the plastic wrap just around the outside of this, a little bit like a little nest, okay? This just supports those pedals. Especially if you're in a fairly humid area, this will just obviously just support them until the petals dry, okay? And that is how you make uh, the, the rainbow rose, the simple molded rose as a rainbow rose. But remember, this could all be made, you can see here, this is a pink one here. So you see, obviously, you can make this just in a straightforward color, whatever color you want to, golden yellow, red, white, whatever. And then the leaves, when you make the leaves, we do those with uh, 
ejector. And if you watch my Secrets on the Renshaw Academy um, uh, episode, uh, which is episode six, I showed how to use the PME plunger butterfly. So this is exactly the same. So you could just modify um, some green uh, fondant to become comparable to gum paste, all right? And just do this as I showed in episode six, how to do the butterfly. So if you watch that episode, I reference a few of these things on this, uh, on this uh, episode as well, okay? So that's how you would make, and then they would just be dried and then attached with a little bit of piping gel. So that is our, as I said, simple molded rose. So another slight variation on this is this uh, rose made with the uh, easiest rose ever. And uh, this is a very quick way to make roses. And again, can be made for a classic rose, but here I'm gonna show you how to do like a rainbow stripe rose. So again, this is really fun to do, and especially when you do these just in solid color, a very, very quick way to make quick roses for cupcakes and things. Um, now, what I've got here is I'm going to take number 11 size um, paste. This is the just leftover paste from the other project, all right? So this is just a sort of like modified as needed. So you want about number 11 size, all right? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna roll this into a sausage. So just gonna roll this into, remember if you work on a little silicone mat, you get a little bit more traction. So just gonna roll this into about a four inch right about 10 centimeter sausage. And then I'm gonna just cut these sausages in half, all right? So I have about two inch um, long sausages, about five centimeters. Okay, okay, and then what we're gonna do is I'm going to use a slightly, this is just a plastic folder. And the reason is because I'm gonna put this through my pasta machine, I'm gonna use this. And this needs to be made a little bit less than the width of a pasta machine. A pasta machine is actually about five and a half inches wide, or right about 14 centimeters. So I've made this about five inches, about 12.5 centimeters wide. This is just a plastic page protector, okay? Now, I've already got my other pieces made. So I've got these, so they look almost a little bit like crayons. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a little bit of vegetable um, fat or vegetable shortening. Just gonna just rub down the side and then I will take my next color. So I'm just gonna use a brush and I just keep this brush just for this purpose. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of layering these and then just gonna put, now the reason why we're using a vegetable fat, vegetable shortening, what that's going to do, that's going to stick the paste together, you see? So, because it actually will hold the paste together, and then you have the blue, and then the purple. So now we're going to uh, roll this out. So I'm gonna just put like a piece of non-slip mat or a silicone mat underneath. I'm just gonna use my rolling pin, and I'm just gonna roll this. So you see, I'm just gonna make, make this, and I'm just gonna start to roll this this way as well. Now if, once we, go, once we actually roll this out, this will actually stick together, but you're just going to just put the, the vegetable fat shortening will hold the paper. See how they, these will, um, as I said, this will hold this together. All right, now you just want to just trim. If there's any paste that's sort of too close to the edge, just trim that. And again, we can reuse all of these pieces of paste. I'm gonna show you how to reuse these in a little bit. And then this is ready to go in the past, through the pasta machine, okay? So we're gonna go through the pasta machine on number one set in first and then I will go through on number two. And that's gonna thin this out to what we need, okay? So then just, you know, roll this if you need to, because it needs to just be about the length of the, so this is just showing you really, I'm just gonna show you one, one layer of petal, but of course you can do, can do this uh, bigger, larger amounts of this, all right? But just generally the stripes. So, um, so that would be, as I said, number 11 cut in half and make the two inch, five centimeter pieces. So, anyway, so you're gonna open up the flap, okay? And then you're gonna make your cut here. All right, just gonna make the cut with the product. You see, and so you're gonna get the sort of the stripes, okay? And then you can also, um, when you're using this, you can of course do rosebuds as well. You can make obviously the full rose. 
This particular one here is actually two layers, all right? I'm just gonna show you one layer to make a smaller one. But remember, these scraps you can reuse, all right? These can be used. I'm gonna show you some other things with those. I'm gonna pull these away and just leave in the, the rows here and just put those into another plastic flap. So you've got those ready to use. And if you're doing this on a larger scale, you can also use like a bigger, a bigger folder as well. I'm gonna just take this, take this away. And because these are just basically put together with vegetable shortening, they actually will separate. So you can actually reuse these as well. You can just re-knead them. Now again, this could be done for like a graduation. You could alternate your colors, school colors, college colors, you know, so you could do these for all sorts of um, things. Now what I do here is I, um, I use a large balling tool, it's a jumbo balling tool, or you can use the end of the rounded end of a rolling pin. And I'm just gonna thin the edge of the petals out a little bit here. Just gonna thin this out. And then I'm gonna use the back of my no-flip pad. So I'm gonna use the back of my no-flip pad here. Just gonna just peel this off. You see this will stay together because of the vegetable. And I'll just turn this over. I'm gonna use some um, edible glue. This is a shelf-stable, easy glue, edible glue. And I have this in a little roller. Um, so this is a very convenient way to put this. So you just pop the top off of the little roller, fill it with your edible glue. And this is a great way to, uh, to use edible glue for ribbons and things. So I'm just gonna roll the edible glue down the middle of this. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my so you can use a little scraper, like a little scraper like this, basically just something thin to lift this up. I'm gonna fold this over, like so. All right, and then I'm gonna put a little bit more edible glue here. Now using this technique of the vegetable shortening to hold it, or fat to hold it together, you know, it's important that your paste, you condition it with a little bit of vegetable fat, so it's almost like a little bit on the sticky side. And then we're gonna take your Scraper, so just lift this up, and you're just gonna start rolling this up. You're just gonna roll this up level. So this is an FMM product, and it's been around for a couple of years. It's very useful, but I just wanted to show you a sort of a fun, slightly different way to use the, the product here. So you see how you come, come around like this. And then using your Dresden tool here, you can just sort of open out the pedals here. If you do have any little slight imperfections on the pedals, you can just use a pair of scissors just to trim this. You see, you can just actually open this out. And here I'm gonna take the orange and the, and if the pedals separate a little bit, don't worry too much about it, just because when you pinch this with your fingers, when you pinch this with your fingers, they will just fuse back together again. And they're just gonna, just gonna be pinched back. And here is the blue and purple one. So those are just gonna come over like that, okay? You see, that's how you would do the first stage of the rows. And then all you basically do is you just would make another one, and then the next one is just going to be, you just continue and just wrap it around. And uh, so it's very, very easy rows to make. And you can see this has got two layers. And then just like I showed you on the other rows, you're just gonna trim that with your scissors. And uh, that will give you your, as I said, rainbow, two-tone, three-tone, five-tone uh, rows. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, an internationally known and recognized pastry chef and master cake artist. My signature color is apple green and I travel the globe extensively, teaching cake and pastry professionals and judging at cake shows. This busy schedule earned me the nickname several years ago of the Green Tornado. I'm originally from England, but have called Atlanta, Georgia, the home for the past three decades. And this is where my base of operation is located with my retail gallery, my online store fulfillment center and my classroom where I teach a variety of cake and pastry related classes including the Renshaw Academy modules and host amazing instructors like CakeFlix TV star Sydney Galpern. I have developed my own line of exclusive Nicholas Lodge branded products as well as the Flower Pro line of silicone molds in collaboration with Katie Sue Designs. 
all of which are used around the world by fellow cake artists and pastry chefs. So join me on Cake Flix TV for the next episode of The Green Tornado Live. Sweet wishes. Welcome back. So in this uh, part, I'm going to talk a little bit about some fun things to do with leftovers. Like, for example, making your own customized sprinkles. So these are like rainbow sprinkles, something you can make with all of the scraps you have left over. Now, we're going to use, this is the angel hair attachment, which has got the really, really fine spaghetti angel hair for the pasta attachment, either an electric one or a hand-operated one. And uh, so what I've done, these would just be like the strips left over from that um, last rose I showed in the, the easiest rose ever. Um, or you can just literally just roll out some little bits of your paste left over, um, just pull them apart. It doesn't matter if you've got little tiny bits of color on there. And then I'm going to uh, put these through the pasta machine. So you're just going to put your little strips through and you're going to get these little pieces coming through. Now these have of course been rolled out about number two, all right? So this is perfect thickness for your sprinkles. All right, so your, your uh, pieces will go like that. And you're just gonna put these onto a piece of parchment paper. And then uh, what you would do is you would leave these generally to dry. You could put this in a food dehydrator. Because this is modified fondant, it's not like gum paste. And you can also totally do these with gum paste as well. But uh, then what you would do is literally you're just gonna just chop these up. So you can just take these and then just generally just use a knife like this and just gonna just chop these up into pieces like sprinkle size, like so. Now these ones were actually made yesterday, so of course these are uh, dry now. And you can just put the different colors into there. And uh, so this will give you actually sort of separate, as you can see, really cute rainbow sprinkles. Okay, so those could be used, for example, on a cupcake. So you could just sort of sprinkle those onto a cupcake like this, if you're doing a sort of, a, as I said, a theme here. So just some sprinkles onto there. Look how cute that is, you know, just uh, homemade sprinkles. Very, very easy to do. All right, nice thing again about these, you can customize them for graduations, you know, school, college graduations and things. Corporations, you know, so corporate colors could be used. Now also when you're using the um, scraps of color that are sort of already mixed together, so like this, all right? So these were obviously what I took off of the first rows, okay? Uh, the simple rows. Those you can just sort of put through the pasta machine like that. And then again, these can be cut up like this. Now, of course, these are gonna be a little bit sort of different colors because they're blended colors, but again, can totally be used. I mean, these would actually look nice in autumn or fall color. Um, so, you know, you can use these for different types of cakes. So that would just be the blended color. Remember, I cut off at the bottom of the rows. All right, and um, so really fun, fun option on using up your scraps of leftover paste. And another way to use the scraps are making these little tiny roses. These are like ribbon roses and they're made with the fettuccine or noodle attachment. So this would be used for like fettuccine noodles. So I'm gonna just roll these out just a little thinner by hand, all right? So this would actually be about number uh, four on the pasta machine if you were using them, which you can totally do. And then we're gonna put these through the fettuccine noodle attachment. So I'm gonna go through the fettuccine noodle attachment. So these would just feed through the top here. These will just give me my little strips. So now we're going to put them into, just into a plastic flap. This just obviously just stops them drying while we're making the little uh, ribbon roses. These little side, obviously odd ones, you can just recycle those. But it really just shows you how you can take all of your uh, paste and you can use your paste in, uh, as I said, totally. You don't have to waste anything. So all your little scraps you can reuse for sprinkles, or you can do these little um, decorations. So these are, as I said, the uh, little strips. Now, when you make the little roses, so for example, these are done with some green paste, and literally what they have been done, I've just made, you made those a little bit like a jelly roll or a Swiss roll. So you just literally take your paste here, and usually this will just stick to itself, and I normally just fold over the end, and you just roll this up. So you're just gonna bring this around here, and just gonna roll like this, so you're just gonna roll around like that. And you can make these just very, very simple little roses. And then when you're ready to finish, you just come down, you just break off, and then you can just take a pair of scissors, with your pair of scissors, you can just cut those off like that. So it's just gonna give you this little tiny rose, okay? 
So that's just like a little spiral rose. Now, you can also um, make this rose look a little bit more, you can see here, like on the rainbow ones there, I've done little purple and blue balls, and I've got, these are just done like I've just shown you, the yellow and the orange one. And then the red one and the central green one are done where you make a little bit more of a stylized rose. And this can be done on a larger scale as well. So that is you take your paste here, and then with your paste, you're just gonna fold over the end. This is just like how you would make ribbon roses. And what you do here is you're gonna come around, so you're just gonna roll around with your finger. So you're gonna make your little, like the same as I just showed you. You're gonna come down, and then what you do is you make an internal fold. So you make like an internal fold here, and you're gonna come up, so you create like a little petal. You're gonna come down, you're gonna make an internal fold. You're gonna make a second petal, you see? And you're gonna make an internal fold, and you're gonna make a little third petal. So you can do like three petals or four petals, and you make an internal fold, and you're gonna make another petal. So you see how that just makes a quick, like little tiny rose. And again, you can just pinch this off with your fingers. All right, and that is how you make the little uh, rose is there. So this little rose is made with, as I said, that's just rib with ribbon, like what you make with ribbons. Another fun thing you can do is you can make like party streamers, which are great for this application, it can be made in all different lengths. So you're just gonna take some of your strips through the fettuccine attachment, and then what you're gonna do is just hold these onto like a wooden dowel. I'm using here a uh, large stick we use for flower making. So you just pop these off, and you can just sort of let these dry. And these are wonderful to use for, as I said, for, you know, gain graduations. You can do these on gift package cakes, but you're just going to take your strips and just going to wrap these around. But these will work really well with our sort of unicorn and, uh, as I said, rainbow theme like this. So you see how you can do these, but these wonderful on cupcakes um, work really, really well. I'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back. So the last thing I'm going to show you with the uh, little strips, you know, so this is also done with the same fettuccine attachment. I've rolled this out number four, but this was just some of my leftover project paste. And if you go to nicholaslodge.com, you'll be able to download. There is going to be a uh, rainbow uh, download, which will have all the instructions for the other flowers and the little curly cues and uh, all of those things as well. Very. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my strip. I'm going to show you how to make little miniature bows. Now here I'm going to take a strip of paste. So this strip of paste is going to be cut four inches. All right, so basically like 10 centimeters long. So I'm gonna do this in inches here, okay? And so I have this four inches. And uh, then what I'm gonna do is gonna use some tweezers. These are just plain tweezers, not, not too pointed. And at every one inch or about two and a half centimeters, I'm going to then gonna pinch in the middle. So I'm gonna pinch here, and I'm gonna pinch at one inch increment. I'm gonna pinch at three inch increment. So what you're creating is almost like a link of sausages, okay? So you get like almost like four little sausages there. And you're gonna turn this over. I'm gonna put a little bit of piping gel. So I'm gonna just take a little tiny bit of piping gel. I'm just gonna put that into the middle here. So just into the center part of the paste. And then using a toothpick or your companion tool, I'm gonna to bring this join over to meet this join. So what I do here is I bring this over and then where those two meet, I squash that down and then I fold this back, and then I do the same on the other side. So I fold this down, 
fold this back, you see? So this is upside down, and then what you do is you turn the whole thing over on itself, and you're then going to pull the little tails down, all right? And then I take actually my tweezers, and with my tweezers I've got these about a quarter of an inch, about, you know, five millimeters open, and then what I actually do there is I just push that into the middle, and then I pinch it together, and that's going to give me, and then I just flatten that top piece there, and that's going to give me like my little center, so you just pinch it, and just flatten it with your toothpick or Dresden tool like this. And then you can cut your, you can just cut the little tails on the end there. And so when you do that, you can use a pair of scissors. You could use, obviously, a little cutting wheel. My little companion tool has got actually a nice sharp edge on there, so you can actually just use that. I don't really ever use, like, exacto knives or um, scalpels because that would damage the surface of my plastic work surface I'm working on. But if you're working on a cutting mat, and you see that is how you create little miniature bows. Now these little bows are wonderful to use in all sorts of application um, on cupcakes, cake pops, cookies, and I use these in lots and lots of different ways. So that is how we make the easy little bow. To finish up, I'm going to show you how to make some clouds. These are going to be used in Sydney's episode. We're going to be finishing off a cake with like a rainbow theme and putting some of the elements I've shown you onto this. Now, clouds can be made, uh, this method is if you take some uh, gum paste, this is just Renshaw gum paste, flour paste. You just take that into different shapes, put it onto a silicone baking mat, and you just literally microwave that for one minute. Now, the wattage I'm using is a 700 watt microwave, so if you're obviously using a higher watt, a lot of household microwaves are 1200, 1400 watt, but you might only need 30 or 40 seconds. But what happens is it starts to puff up, and then you're basically, but remember, this is going to be hot, and uh, it's going to, if it's in there too long, it's going to caramelize. But basically, that's going to make, as I said, like clouds. You can also also airbrush these black and gray and make them as like rocks, as coral, and different other things. I'm going to show you a little bit more of a sort of fantasy type of cloud, which um, this technique I've used several times before, and this is actually made with mini marshmallows and gum paste. And so what we do here is I'm taking some of the Renshaw flower modeling paste, but basically any gum paste should work for this. And I'm just going to roll this out, and I'm just going to work a little bit of shortening into this. I'm going to roll this out very thin, all right? Now, I'm just going to do this by hand. I'm not using a pasta machine here. And, of course, you can make different size cloud clusters. But you're just going to just roll this out. So you just want to almost, like, roll this out as thin as you can get it by hand. So see how you're going to get it nice and nice and thin here. Because this is actually, we want it in a round, so it would be a little bit wider than actually the pasta machine. That's why I'm just rolling it out by hand, okay? So just roll it out fairly thin, all right? So it's nice, nice and thin, okay? And uh, then what I'm going to do is just going to rub this all over with some vegetable fat, some vegetable shortening. So I'm just going to rub this all over. And then what I normally do is just place this onto like a um, piece of uh, convoluted crepe foam like this. And then you're going to take some little mini marshmallows and you're just going to do like a little cluster, obviously depending on how big you want this to be. This just sort of helps to almost keep them in place on a sort of, uh, you could also do this in a small bowl as well. And then we're going to create almost like a purse. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just start to pleat the paste around. And just going to, the marshmallows would stay in the inside of this, you see? So you're just going to just build up. So you just see making these little tiny pleats here. And you see the vegetable shortening will then stick to itself. All right, and then you're going to then just bring these around. And you're going to turn this upside down. And then with a pair of scissors, you're just going to just cauterize. So you're just going to cut off the excess piece. Now, then what I do is just going to use now, this is going to be microwave for, like, in, a, again, a 700-watt microwave. I've literally put it in for 10 seconds. So if you have in a household microwave, as at a 12 or 1400-watt um, one, probably five seconds. Because if you put it in there too long, what's going to happen? It's not going to be the paste that will be the issue. It's going to be the marshmallows are just going to melt. But we're going to just, what we're going to do is going to actually melt, uh, put this in the microwave, and you see what will then happen is the uh, paste will soften, the marshmallows will soften, and it almost will like form a softer shape, okay? So I'm going to pop this um, just onto a little silicone mat like this. And of course, you could do several of these at the same time, and this could stay out for 10, 15 minutes before you put them all, microwave them. But as I said, so this is going to go into the microwave for literally like 10 seconds. 
So this has now been in the microwave for 10 seconds. So you can see that it's sort of the paste and then obviously the marshmallows are starting to melt inside. But we can then just create the shape and you can just sort of like emphasize things here. But just going to just sort of see how you can actually just emphasize that. And see, once the warm gum paste as well hits the air, it's going to dry fairly quickly. Now you literally just let that dry, all right? So probably about two or three hours will be enough. And, uh, but of course, at this, this stage, you see it's quite squatchy, all right? Because obviously the marshmallows need to cool back down. You see, this is one, obviously, you see how it becomes firm. And then all you're gonna do is once they're dry, we're going to dust this with some Super Pro. Now this is a pump brush. Um, pump brushes you fill from the top. So as you fill this from the top with pearl dust. All right, this is actually a mineral, make, it's made, made for mineral makeup. But uh, when you're doing a large surface area like this, you can actually just use it with the pump brush open. So we're gonna put some pearl eyes. You could also airbrush this with a pearl sheen as well. And then when you do smaller uh, pieces, like when I do this for stenciling, I would actually do uh, use uh, it, the, this locked. And uh, so that's good for like smaller areas. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of gray. So I'm gonna use some, uh, this is a dove gray dust. And I've mixed a little bit of cornflower with this. And I'm just gonna use this for some shadows. Again, you know, if you're confident with an airbrush, but I'm just gonna go around and just sort of like just emphasize the areas of the cloud with a little bit of very light gray. If you don't have gray, you can just use black with cornflower in here like so. And these are going to be used for the clouds. Um, Sydney's going to be showing you a beautiful isomalt rainbow. So we're gonna have the sort of the clouds and the rainbow in one part of the cake. Um, so these are how you would do your clouds. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll have fun making the elements I've shown you. Remember to watch Sydney next um, as Sydney shows you how to use some of the elements of the theme uh, in Isomote. And then we'll both be back at the end of Sydney's episode to show you how to put things together. Until next time, this has been uh, Green Tornado Live. See you real soon. Bye-bye.